Good afternoon, everybody. Happy end of the week. Um, thank you for joining us again for another week, an edition of our Condo Insider that's put on by Hawaii Council of Community Associations. So today with me, I have a um, distinguished guest from ProSource Wholesale. They're over by the Bougainville area by where Target is, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, and he's going he's gonna to educate us about floor um, sound barrier ratings. We're going to get a good education on that. Um, very informative. And um, some of the information he has is I really think a lot of um, condos can put this into their, um, into their design guidelines, whether it's a single family or even, especially condos, because that's the biggest, you know, complaints about the noise from the unit above. But um, with the information he has in here, um, a lot of the condos should be able to adopt these into their um, guidelines on flooring installations. So, um, Brent, welcome to the show. Hi. Nice to have you here with us. Thank you for having me. So, um, Brent has been with ProSource for about five years now. Um, so, why don't you give us a little tidbit about, um, about the impact installation class, also known as IIC? Sure. Gotcha. Um, so we're going to go a little bit more of that in our into the presentation, but IIC, you know, it's, um, you probably hear it all over, never knew what it stood for, um, but it does stand for impact installation class. And it, it's generally a standardized number um, that you can kind of work into your requirements in order to mitigate sound from the top floor going down to the bottom floor. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll get into that uh, once we start the presentation, but, um, you know, having a standardized number is an easy way to just, um, you know, measure different requirements in your home and place that for a harmonious living um, place into in a, a harmonious dwelling. Do you get, um, do you, so far, I mean, you've been there for, for quite a while, so mm -hmm. quite a few years. Um, is this one of the common issues that when you have customers coming in, they talk about like certain requirements they have to meet, or is this something that you you people automatically tell them about putting in the underlayment for the sound? Absolutely. So um, one thing when our guests come in, um, you know, we do pre-qualifying questions. We ask them about their project. Uh, every time they talk about a condo association or or they live in a condo, first questions we ask is is there any requirements, um, building permits, anything like that. Um, and, and then very specifically the sound requirements or did did they give you some sort of IIC number to reach? So that's very, very common. Um, we see it almost daily. Um, yeah. So explain to us how they how you get how a company um, establishes their sound rating or the product. Sure. Around the um, sure, absolutely. So sound ratings, um, they, a lot of our uh, manufacturers, underlayment, vinyl products, um, they have a IIC rating that's onto their material, and then that can be shared to uh, the guests through, you know, resources online. Um, but how they get to that number is they basically use a tapping machine or a standardized uh, machine that taps from the top floor, and it goes to the bottom floor. Um, that bottom floor uh, there is either a worker or a mic setup that is going to record or listen to all the tapping from the top floor. They then put that number into a standardized, um, you know, formula and they spit out a IIC number or a standard number. Cool. So um, let's pull up the next slide. There's like a little machine. Um, they have different testing methods. So um, I'm so sorry, I'm not able to see the slides. The one with the machine, and they're in a um, in a room, but there's a machine that they put onto the floor, and it it creates a tapping sound, and that help that that measures that rating. That's correct. Yeah. So um, the tapping sound is it's basically very very simple, rudimentary. It just taps on the top floor down to the bottom floor. Mm. And actually. This sound rating, that machine is probably not just for flooring. They can use it for different types of, like in the picture, they have water pipes, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure they could probably use it for the same thing, right? To mm -hmm. see how much 
noise the water makes going down that pipe because I've been in condos before and I go I can hear the water in the walls you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> which sometimes it's kind of like when you first go in there you're like whoa is it coming down um mm -hmm. and the big question that was asked to me the other day I was telling you that um this question came up about these um ratings um last weekend and um the cost to do these ratings mm -hmm. do you have any idea what that is yeah so um it's it's in a little uh, bit on the uh, next slides but um what the cost for these are very very expensive so again um, a lot of these manufacturers kind of pre-test it just to because they know it's a selling point for a lot of the owners um but when someone were to request a test they would have to go to a third party so they don't go to the manufacturers um they don't go to us they would go to a third party request a sound test um, it's a standardized test that they um, do, and it's very, very costly. Um, so it can be upwards of twenty thousand um, dollars, give or take. It, it's quite expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's pull up slide number five, where it has a um, sound rating. So for um, mm -hmm. laminate and wood floors, there's two. Sound you have an IIC and an STC. What is that? That's correct. So as you see here um, in the example, there are many different ratings. Um, this particular set of ratings is from our one of our underlayments that we carry here. Um, as you can see, the II, there's IIC listed for different materials, even uh, more specifically. So for laminate, luxury vinyl tile, or LVT, as you commonly heard, as well as ceramic tile. Uh, there is different IICs for different materials. Um, as well as STC that's on there. So I'll exp uh, there's a good illustration a little bit later, but um, a STC is basically the sound in or around the room versus the sound from the top floor to the bottom floor. Oh. So when when we talked earlier about you know the the little girl next door um, playing at you know 9 p.m. 10 p.m. and she's she's walking on the floor, the STC rating is going to be that. Um, magic number that you you have to pay attention to when trying to mitigate the sound from the um the room next door oh i see so let's talk about the underlayments mm -hmm. i know when you usually go to and buy flooring they're always talking about the underlayments mm -hmm. so it's really the underlayment that really gives you that that um ic rating or prevents it correct yes the underlayment is um the usually the mitigator if the um, planks don't have it. Um, in installations today, vinyl planks um, usually have an attached underlayment, which has an IIC, a pretty good one, although a lot of condos, in my experience, want it higher than that. So um, in our instance, we do have our material. We have an underlayment that is approved to go under there, um, and that can boost up the IICs to the requirements of the condo associations. And there are different types of underlayments out there. Um, generally, there are three types. There is foam, also cork, and uh, rubber. So with that, there's different benefits in those three. Uh, foam is generally widely available. It's very inexpensive. Um, it's light, so it's very easy to install. And you know, probably like 80% of our guests use some sort of foam underlayment. Um, there also is cork underlayment. It's a little bit more of a premium product, but it's a um, good for the environment. So if if your guests are uh, environmental conscious, then it's it's a good bet. It is a little bit thicker, um, a little bit heavier, so it's a little bit harder to install as well. Um, there's also rubber underlayments out there. Um, you know the really thick ones. I think I think you've seen them. Sometimes the um, uh, guests use them as uh, gym mats as well, or putting it on uh, gym equipment onto there. That also helps with uh, sound mitigations from the top floor down to the bottom floor. But very thick, very heavy, um, harder to install, harder to, uh, you know, kind of fit into your cert certain areas. Um, there are a lot of underlayments out there that work differently with different materials. Um, so we always recommend to talk to one of us, talk to me, um, let me be a resource, and we can kind of talk you through that process of finding the right underlayment for the right area of the home okay so on our next slide number seven it you um you mentioned it earlier um mm -hmm. it describes the differences between the ic and the stc mm -hmm. so what is Cor that 
Correct. So this is a great illustration. Um, this illustration is uh, it's a multi-level dwelling. Uh, the top floor, you know, we have uh, Mary that's tap dancing at three in the morning. Um, the sound is going to be going down. And what IIC measures is the sound mitigation from the top floor to the bottom floor. Um, an example of STC, if she's, you know, doing her midnight uh, tap dancing, the sound is going to be bouncing off the walls, off the ceilings, and that's going to be the um, sound inside. So STC or a higher STC level will prevent the noise from bouncing inside the home. Uh, very similar to IIC, the, the lower of the ratings um, means there's more transfer of sound, meaning it's going to be a louder. Uh, the higher ratings up to 100 are going to be the, um, you know, it's it's a better insulator or better mitigator of sound from the top floor to the bottom floor. Okay, so one question that came up to me last um, mm -hmm. Saturday when I was talking to some um, condo people um, was, um, you know, when they're talking about, they're, we we're just talking out loud and, you know, like, um, how does, a, you know, about how a condo would put their um policy and procedures together regarding flooring installation, whether mm -hmm. it be carpet or hardwood or vinyl or tile. Mm -hmm. um, one question was asked, well, how do we know what rating they bought? If we say we want the highest rating, like mm -hmm. 100, um, how, do, how does the um, condo know that they actually bought that 100 rating? Um, so on, I had suggested, I go, well, maybe have them provide a copy of the invoice. Does the invoice even show that mm -hmm. rating? Um, our invoice doesn't show, but um, typically when that's a very, very common question to ask um, for them to provide the IIC rating, a lot of the products actually have it in their spec sheets. So if, uh, you know, you put into your requirements, please um, require the guests to get a spec sheet of the uh, product or um, material to them so not only does the um, vinyl plank tile they sometimes have uh, spec sheets to provide that but the underlayment always does the underlayment is um the the spec sheet that'll have that iic stc to meet the requirements um some guests or excuse me some condo associates also require the material that you're going to be submitting as well um to hold on hand i always say it's a good idea for, you know, once a um, underlayment is approved for the condo association based off the IAC to either keep a sample, keep a spec sheet, um, because you're going to have residents asking in the future, hey, what underlayment was previously approved or what underlay underlayment meets your requirements? And, you know, you have something on the side say this, this, um, you know, per you can talk to my guy, Brad, he has this over here, or you can spec this from um, anywhere and get it get it to you so you can uh you know finish your project or have the material to finish your project kind of like Millie Lani Town Association some of the paint companies have their array of approved paint colors mm -hmm. oh <laughs> gotcha yeah yeah so you can go in there and like okay these are the only colors uh -huh. approved if, uh, that's it's a good a, idea it's though, a little stringent have a sample. Little, little stringent but again it's it's when you have you know tried and true products you know that that's going to work with everybody and it's going to be harmonious to everybody and it just makes everybody in the building happy so do some of these come with um, performance warranties? That's a great question. I don't think that there's any performance warranties. Um, you can, I think as far as like, you know, sure firing the, um, the sound mitigation, you can request like the testing methods or the, the actual test It's very, very complicated, but you can read through that that was tested by a third party to have some understanding. Um, I'm always a big proponent of real real world tests and to put it down and to put the material and kind of do a real world test. And again, if it is good or if it is approved, then you can say, hey, this is good going forward. If you just use this with a specific type of vinyl or um, you know, vinyl with this type of IAC, I think it should work going forward. So um, what about the installers? Do you use, do you, um... Do you have um, a select few that you normally use or suggest um, that are familiar with the installation methods? Is it just a standard installation? Um, it's fairly standard in, in all honesty. Um, the underlayments that we have, especially the foam one, like I mentioned, is very light. You can, you know, a hundred square foot roll, you can carry like five or six of them and it'd be fine when you're laying it out. Um, very, very simple. 
Um, some have moisture mitigation mitigation properties as well, but you know, just the normal um, acoustical mitigators. You just roll it out. Um, don't overlap them. Just kind of make them taut. There's like sometimes there's seam tape like that. Um, they usually do come with an instruction manual, and it's very very easy. Um, I can install it, and it's saying that's saying a lot. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So what is the best rating for, well, here's, here's a question you have, mm -hmm. you have wood flooring mm -hmm. and then you have like the engineered type mm -hmm. wood flooring, those different, the um, different types. So depending on the type of wood flooring, would it also be a different um, IC rating that you need to put for the underlayment or are they pretty much the same? That's right. The great question. Um, there's every single material does have a different IIC um, rating, even when you're stacking it with different underlayments as well. Um, they generally, if they did like like this previous slide that you saw, they'll they'll say wood and it has the IIC. So there's like a general kind of idea for that. Um, but you know. Going back to how, I guess, working with the material versus the area versus the underlayment, um, there is a specific wood underlayment that you would put a, uh, like a plywood board and the underlayment with the wood and it, it boosts up the IIC quite high versus if you just use just, you know, our underlayment, it might be lower for the wood. So again, knowing your project, knowing the material, knowing the area you're going to be putting down and um, why or how much mitigation of sound you're going to need. Uh, it's very dependent by project. It's very specific. So it it can get complicated um, that way. But again, speaking to someone that works with it every single day, the manufacturers, even the installers at times, because they're very familiar with working with condos that um, they can help that process of maybe standardizing, um, you know, requirements or um, just explaining to your guests what they'll need in order to complete their project. They also kind of need to know how their flooring is, like um, how thick the concrete slab of the floor is. Does that make a difference? Mm -hmm. So they would kind of need to know some of that. And hopefully they have that information available. Because mm -hmm. um, I would think the thicker the slab, maybe the better it is. Generally, um, you know, we found in cases that's not always true. Uh, but when, when they're giving those um, test results, uh, it's very, very detailed in what they tested with. Uh, what kind of subfloor they tested with the material on there um even just like the sometimes they'll test one product for different you know six inch slab eight inch slab drop ceilings um and they'll even put like the uh, insulator that would be in that drop ceiling and and um, what that did very scientific um again they try to boil it down to that iic number to be a little bit more understandable for uh common folks like myself so at your um location you have several different types of brands and with that mm -hmm. they have also the different types of um it depends on the type of application flooring application you're going to use right that you would probably have a different brand that might be better than a, another brand that that's that's correct mm -hmm. but um you know the trend right now i think vinyl is the most popular we're seeing an influx of um laminate nowadays um hardwood still tends to be more of a luxury uh, item or product to purchase but all of them do have specific underlayments that will help mitigate in different ways uh, for different areas as well. That vinyl, is that that one that looks like wood? <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, it's it's a 100% um, waterproof product that uh, looks like wood. It's floating, so it's a very easy to install, very um, inexpensive labor prices. And probably 80% of the market today is purchasing um, uh, vinyl as a, as a hard surface option. Okay. Yeah, I'm removing three layers of those old peel and sticks off of okay. one section of yeah. the house. And I'm like, this is horrible. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we still see those around, you know, there's <laughs> been a lot of improvements since then. Um, and it's an ever evolving uh, industry. And uh, we see new material lines all the time and products all the time. Okay. So we're nearing our end. So you, you have like two, four, six different brands that you represent at ProSource. Um, so, um, Let's say a board member came in and that person was tasked with trying to set up their specs. Are mm -hmm. you able to help them put that together? Thank you for um, asking that. So, you know, I should have prefaced this. I, I'm not a lawyer or I'm not a. No, it's um, just helping them put the different products. So you can, or you can actually help them put the board together. 
of this oh. the, this type of layman and you know yeah, something like that you know but yeah absolutely yeah absolutely so again we work with um condo associations clients that have sound requirements we have i've worked with dozens and dozens of projects that needed that and um you know even finding something for a specific condo because every unit should be the same um or very very similar uh finding a, a product that will work from you know the bottom floor all the way to the top floor with the different type of materials we've done that before in the past um we put together a design board like you mentioned with you know the underlayment the planks um to present and even do a little bit testings like we we have um speaking of stc like you mentioned uh we have a new product that helps a lot with the sound in or around the home being the stc so if if you still if you're on the bottom floor you don't have a um you know a lower a lower floor uh we have products that'll help with the sound in or around the home um just to make it harmonious and peaceful for for everyday living okay great oh this is kind of kind of cool um with the different sound sound barriers and different applications for that um and also, again, for to recap, it depends on the type of flooring you're going to put in, hardwood versus uh, the engineered um, or even the vinyl plank um, wood-looking flooring. Um, the, it, it will vary depending on the type of actual flooring that you're going to put in. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't realize even tile. I just thought it was thin set, tile. <laughs> well, tile can get very loud. And again, we do have products to... Um, do a bunch of plethora of things. We're talking about sound now to mitigate sound, but there's also products to mitigate cracking, uh, movement of it. Um, to get too cold, we have a warming warming underlayment. So there's tons of things you can do with your flooring and even to put underneath your floor just to make it a better daily living for yourself. Okay, great. Okay, Brent, I want to thank you um, again for being on the show today um, and um, also being able to um, and being available to help these condos to help set their specs, at least let them be aware of the different ratings, helping to educate them. Um, and, you know, even being put a sample board up together. Um, mm -hmm. And again, but then also that's going to be also um, whatever the condo does, typically it will be subject to an attorney review, but at least you got Excellent. them, get them going so that <laughs> they can at least go, just look at that board right there, go down to pro source, but this is the type and at least they'll have uh, pictures and the samples up there that they can feel and touch, um, that the condos can have a copy that's inside their office, and then you can maintain a copy for your records as well. I really appreciate you taking the time out um, and look forward to working with you in the future too, if you come up with a, another kind of product for a condo. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody for joining us today for Condo Insider. And look forward to seeing you um, in a couple of weeks on another subject that we have coming up that's going to be even just as great on um, financials and reserves for condo boards. Um, that's going to be next week. So I'll see everybody again next week. Thank you, Brett. <laughs>